Welcome to World of Warships Blitz with me, Big Dave from Seed. Welcome everybody. If you're new to the channel, you can subscribe, you can leave comments down below after the video if you watch it all. Uh, but generally, I'm trying to like, promote the game, uh, not just for my fleet or like, uh, like whoever comes to watch uh, the channel, but uh, also to promote for the actual game itself. Um, if you don't watch most of this, uh, do jump onto World of Warships Blitz uh, main YouTube uh, channel and subscribe and support the channel. Um, they need your help as just as much as we need theirs for a game that we enjoy. It's just as good as any other uh, shoot 'em up game that's out there, multiplayer, and uh, get to uh, join the community with a lot of uh, fanatics that love warships. Um, basically, I'm doing a video today and it is on the topic of uh how to i don't know work well as a team basically um there's been quite a few youtube videos out there that are to do with uh the structures of ships and the stats but basically if you've already got that in front of you on a game then really do you need to have a look at all that stuff it's all stuff common sense that you can read catch up mind you there are some little interesting facts some might have a little bit of history to do with it all but Again, it's one of them things. I've been always one of them type of players that I've always learnt from in game itself, uh, learnt the hard way and built up a, a status as time playing the game. Um, but basically to newcomers, um, if you're enjoying the, the game and you want to do well, here's a few little tips that may help you along and uh, get you to a decent percentage before you go to your next steps and go into, I don't know, competitions or bigger fleets. Uh, so first things first, uh, what you do need to learn is that the game is basically not just individual solo plays, even though it's great for getting certain particular stats, but do them at lower tier, um, but working with a team. So by doing that, go into a game, Play your first few games, interact with the public, greetings, use the little taskbar on the left, start saying hello. People nine times out of ten, if they're interested and they want to win, they will interact, they will say hello, you'll get into a game, you'll you'll be shooting ships as you're going along, and you might get a few few critical kills, and people will be interested to play with you because they know that you've got their back and so on and so forth and uh, by that then you make friends and then you can go into more battles and get more wins behind you giving you a better ratio uh, so first things first um, being a newcomer obviously you need to find a fleet uh, and some can be willing from the word go to take you on some might have to wait until you've got a few stats uh, but the uh, a, a good way to get yourself started when you start in your small tier ships is learning about leagues. So first thing you want to do, again, check top 100 uh, players, people with trophies. Usually they're going to be pretty dangerous on the high seas. So try and study some of the names. Same with leaderboards, fleets with trophies. A lot of them are going to be very competitive, especially in this case, this is the EU server. So from one to the top 20, they're going to be mainly your dangerous threats due to they're going to be the most active. Um, but, you know, there are ones like just a little bit under, like Lila Knights here, a very good fleet. Um, but again, just depends, time of day, who's online so on and so forth so find a fleet jump into a battle once you're in your fleet look at your members see who's online if there are any online grab them they're going to be ones that are going to work with you not just for fleet points but for their own trophies and that's another way of getting started uh, i'll go into battles now and i'll give a few directions depending if you want to be a bb player or a cruiser dd is obviously it's a bit more jungle warfare just going in gorilla uh gorilla style 
Uh, CVs, obviously, it's not my territory. Uh, I'd rather be on the, the open waters shooting versus people. So I can't vouch on that, but there are good CV players. If, if, if you do find any, take some tips off them. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to tell you how to position yourself, uh, what to do in a situation when it comes to wanting to win and how to work well within a team. Okay, so we're setting up, we're getting ready to search for a game. And in this case, I'm in the Turpit, so tier 8 again. If you're very new to the game, obviously it's good to start off in very low tiers, learn your ships, learn how to do your movements and get your accuracy up. Uh, so we're going into this game now and I've got two fellow uh, players with me, Pirates, Lord Grimm, uh, from Seeds. And uh, they've taken the roles as CAs. I'm in, obviously, a very aggressive BB that's um, close combat. And uh, we've got an aura uh, map 1v1 uh, so it's virtually who's going to cap who and it's a death match basically um, so first things first I've got my fellow friend saying defend our base and I'm going to accept and say no problem I know where he is I know what he wants to do my other player in the fleet as a team has said yes someone else has said cannot be done i'm expecting them to be like a bb a dd player and uh surely this rough is a dd player so we'll let him do his little guerrilla warfare stuff but our objective mainly is to defend which was used on the taskbar on the left um we're not expecting full cooperation off every player because every player plays differently. But the ones that are going to be more loyal to you and your play are going to be fleet members or friends that you had before a game. So my first shot was a AP and it was at a destroyer. And it's a case of I've got to get rid of shells, try my luck, switch to HE. I know that the enemy have got four DDs. I've now spotted the Leningrad and I've mentioned to my fleet SOS, which is vitally important. So it knows that I don't want to get flanked and I know that cruisers are very good at shooting DDs. Like this Leningrad is now getting shelled and I can kind of like take it easy virtually. Uh, Leningrad needs to come really close for its uh, torpedoes. I know this. I'm still observing the area. He's gone in smoke. I've put myself in reverse. Maybe do I miss the torpedoes? We shall wait and see. Friends are still shooting. Know that he's in the smoke. I've missed the torpedoes. Perfect. I'm still having a look up the top of the map. I want to see who's coming in. And at the same time, I've still got this dangerous part on the map where a destroyer is by our cap. So I've got a few choices. Do I trust my fleet to, um, you know, take on the oncoming slot? Yes, fine. A DD has just took out a CA. The BB is so far back, I've got nothing to worry about with my CA's cruisers. So I'm going to push for the Leningrad. So what does the... Serpits have, which is amazing, and that's sonar. I've also got third range guns that will kick into action when it gets close. I've got some torps, virtually missed them all, and I've got my HE shells on. My guys still know defense is important, he's popped to smoke again. But is that very wise against the turpits if you're stationary? What does the Turpits have? We can fight fire with, obviously, torpedoes. Another cruiser coming in. Again, I've got left and right on me where I can use torps. So, not that scared at the moment. Turpits is a big big girl. She can, she can handle herself. 
I've got two fires. Yes, I do need to put on my uh, kit, but I've set my torps off. All four are going to hit. Okay. I wasn't able to clear all these torps because I'm in a bit of a predicament, right and left. But I'm able to set my torps also. And it's a deterrent. It's going to make him move. I can get my shots off. Again, fleet were there. It was a double dosage to clear up the pieces. I can turn, report to the guys, tell them defence is clear. They know this. I congratulate them, which you want to do. You want to give your friends uh, some uh, respect. And then tell them, yo, do you know what? All clear here. Yeah? Go up, attack, and thank you. And that's basically it. And it doesn't really matter if you don't have the massive big calibre your objective is to win a game and to win a game if you can defend well because uh, nine times out of ten an enemy team can be aggressive they just push up for points wait for it to happen so now the guys have now pushed up the map still got a good lead nothing to worry about in defence Two destroyers are both in view, uh, and it's happy days. So they're just doing a little bit of a clean up. I'm coming in as a cover up on them. Nothing to worry. We're capping the base just in case anyway. Save on time. And yeah, it's a home run for the guys that are with me. Uh, none of us was seriously damaged and yeah perfect video to tell you what works best again having friends in a fleet that are trustworthy learn to play a few games with them and again in this instance there wasn't a lot of damage done but it was enough to get the victory because we'd done the right actions and the rest of it will come with better medals either in other tiers or just other circumstances no game is the same so we're gonna try again now with a, another battle and uh, this time i've gone for the north carolina she's more of a heavy stand her ground kind of ship she's very long range so we're going to go into a game, North Carolina, she's a heavy ship, she can like hold herself quite well as a defensive ship, but she's, she's mainly long range, so yeah, sort of game now, let's have a look, remember folks, use that taskbar on the left, tell your fleet what you want to do. If one of you is more of an alpha or a case of just even just team bonding, get that message out there. Get it so that even if it's just not your three players, that other players will get involved to support. At the end of the day, it's not all about damage. It's about possession and just getting that win and surviving. Because if you get sunk, then that's one set of points that the enemy team have got and you know it, it just helps that you stay alive because you can hit more targets and you don't get that many enemies on you <laughs> so always try and sink it doesn't even matter if you feel upset that people have pinched a kill like don't worry about that okay as long as you keep on playing there'll always be kills it's about trying to win so in this case, it's another 1v1 map. I'm faffing about with the volume in this game for a, a little while. Pardon uh, the little audio. I'll probably have to cut this little part out. But so our guys have. Yep. I've, I've mentioned that I'm going to defend and I'm waiting for a reply and my guys are correct and saying, yep, yeah, we're, we're going to do that with you as well. So 
that's just the team of three. There are other players in this game, but they're not responding. So again, a lot of relying on team players. So back into the game after a little bit of editing. <laughs> And uh, we've got a few little butts on the waves. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare. Most of your shots are always going to miss unless you're very up close. Try not to do it if you're in a cruiser because for some reason butts do have this temperament of having beautiful aim even if they're not even aiming at you, if that makes sense. You're always going to get shells off 360 turning rotors. Wargaming, if you're listening, yo. You gotta change that. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, but at the same time, it's a butt fest. Everyone loves a butt fest. You know, it's fun. If you lose against butts again, not to worry. It's just practice. You'll get into the ropes of it. Eventually, you'll realise that you can have some very fun aggression in a BB against butts. Uh, but CAs be wary. DDs be wary, because. <laughs> Butts have a tendency to, when when they do shell you, uh, you will take a lot of damage. But in a BB, you know, what's the North Carolina got? 51k, 192. Like, it's a fortress. So you've got nothing really to worry about. So as the game progresses, uh, the guys have still stated, like, there's no problem. They're just going to be jocking around. And I'm looking out for the DD. So I'm going to try to position myself and try not take some torps. Maybe I should have gone one speed at this point. Because that is a pretty bad torps in uh, for me to, I don't know, justify my actions. It was It was poor play by me. But again, I've got a ship that's broadside. And I'm going to take a few shots and took a few modules out. Beautiful. Uh, and keep on watching. Let's see what happens. There's a flood on him, so there's no point me doing a re... Well, I have done a reload, but at the same time, I'm not going to shoot my shells at him because he's virtually been sunk. Save your ammunition. Use it for your next target. Okay, so this point... We got a North Carolina coming in on the far right. We've got a Bismarck up the top, and the cruiser uh, is still relatively far up the top as well. So my guys are just overshadowing that. Uh, something that's pretty scary being on half health. I've got my ship virtually broad, but he has also. Uh, so we're going for a bit of a uh, a dog fight here. I've gone for his turrets. Uh, unlucky, the shells have hit at the back of him. Still checking where that uh, CA is. Notice that the fleet is down to only two players now. My guys are still in charge. Quite happy to just keep on jockeying on this North Carolina. Torps are coming his way. I'm looking to get a salvo on his turrets to weaken him. And I've got myself some more health. He's panicking because of the torps coming in. So, yeah, it's it's now 50-50. And the, we've got the advantage anyway because I've obviously got some very strong players with me. Again, having friends in a fleet or just people that you trust. There's more reliability there. You're going to survive nine times out of ten in a battle. So, again, great. Pals have got him. So now we are dealing with one last ship and we're congratulating each other. And I've even noticed that there's a DD that's staying around uh, that isn't a butt. So again, it's it's great to see he's been a team player. So it's 4v1, 41 seconds to go. This guy's down to half a health. And he's got problems coming in from every angle, unfortunately for him. Um, but yeah, again, it's down to using that talk bar. I can't stress it enough how vital it is uh, within a fleet or just even in a team, even with people that you don't know, just trying to get some kind of like direction where you can all 
join up and uh, you know work to your best abilities because strength in numbers always helps and uh, always give you you guys a bit of support after you know you can always have a bit of banter and jokes and the Okay, the video that I'm now going to show you is basically a case of what happens when everyone is in a team and unfortunately in this case it's a very strong ultimate fleet that's just found a very innocent fleet that's got no one that knows each other and this is the importance of using the taskbar, everyone's in groups and uh, it's a five and a half minute match and we're sizing up our rods and we're just saying right we're we're gonna do this everyone's saying hello to each other everyone's quite familiar with each other and it's unfortunate for the other team we're capping straight away as what i mentioned always try to get to the cap as soon as possible this enemy team has obviously tried to do that now we're starting to give orders to say look there's the enemy Let's go straight in for the kill. Very confident players overall anyway, so um, I wasn't thinking that this game would be a problem. And you will see shortly how quick the, the battle is anyway. So everyone's already talking, giving confidence. BBs are even pushing in. Admiral Hippias taking his last little, little life. Coming into the cap possession, they're already down to two players, the last two players within like what, a minute and a half in the game. Everyone's noticed that the Colorado's on fire. Games all stick, uh, groups all sticking together. Colorado's taking a lot of hits. Bismarck's coming in, so turning my ship just a touch. Stay on point with him so he can't shoot me. That's good with dispersion. Rest of the guys are still handing the Colorado. I'm checking my surroundings. DD's dropped his torps. He's got the Bismarck covered. I'm keeping it on the broad on the Colorado. That's getting critically hit. Guys are just absolutely obliterating it. So he's virtually gone. So they've lost their third player. The Bismarck's obviously giving me a bit of trouble. I'm still face on with him. But I'm very close now, so there's a bit of a problem. Guys have all recognised it. Fleet's very strong. Down to four players. Torps coming in. Bismarck sorted. Gone. Two more players left. Three minutes, 20, 20 odd seconds remaining. Yes, I should have had HE shells on, but the game's going that well. There isn't really much time to change from shells and know what's occurring around the map, which is obviously brilliant in our case, like pure domination. Um, but again, the whole point of this video, uh, this one being the last one, is that again, it's a lot of experienced players, but they've grouped up in a team and everyone's recognized it and yeah it's just total domination um very very fast game everyone's congratulating each other and this poor fleet that we came up against um really didn't stand a chance but again you've got to understand why uh, even if it is ridiculously good, talented players in this team I'm with. And it's because of not dealing with the situation, capping, being with friends. And yeah, there was a little bit of a disadvantage. This, this team were virtually all pros. So it's a shame. But again, it just proves madness. And uh, yeah, I hope all these videos have helped you and uh, get you more on your feet of uh, learning the basics of why it is important to be in teams. Okay, what I will say is thank you ever so much for watching. I hope it does make some kind of sense if you're a newcomer to the game 
uh, the importance of having friends in a game for the victories. Try not to do solo play unless you're going to play low tier, learning ships, learning eight to aim, etc. etc. I don't do videos that often, but if you'd like to subscribe, that's entirely down to you. As I say, do go to World of Warships uh, Gaming and subscribe to their channel. It means a lot to promote their. Uh, their game and it helps us and the industry grow maybe something may come of it in the future um, and another cool thing from wargaming is that they do celebrate uh, little gifts um, to players uh, for like, dedication for being in the game so uh, it's pretty cool I think um, I don't really uh, do videos that often but I may do a Nagato special uh, seems that she's coming up to near enough up to a thousand wins so I might do I don't know a little montage of from 900 to uh, like 1000 and see if I can get her up even more from when I first started if you want to check out the Nagato videos when I first started they're down in uh, the, the videos below in the listing they'll be there somewhere or other uh, just check them out but uh, thanks ever so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one